This is Coca Vision, your host, Joe Crack the Dawn, exclusively on title. Get three months subscription free. The one and only legendary, my favorite producer of all time, my brother, my comrade, Scott Storch. Oh, drug tunnels under the border. Mexican cartels have dug them to funnel their product into our country. Yeah, what up, y'all? This is your boy, Joe Crack. Welcome to Coca Vision Live from the Tunnels. El Chapo Mania. I got the super, most legendary, most phenomenal, probably the most talented producer of all time. He's my brother. I, I, I gotta stop dick riding you, man. I just, man. yo, it's the one and only Scott Storch, man. Thank yeah, yeah. Yeah, Scott. Yeah, Scott, man. Oh. You white, so I believe this industry tried to play you originally because you was white. You was a, a member of the Roots, and you was behind a lot of hits. You played music in a lot of hits, and they weren't saying, all right, Scott Storch did this. Everybody else was taking the credit. And it wasn't until you saved my life and we created Lean Back together, that the first thing they heard was, Scott Storch, nigga! Saved my life. It was mutual. That, that was, that's what opened the doors. When you gave that stamp and let them know what it was. Never again in my life have I seen every number one rapper in America standing in line outside of your studio. Is, am I lying or is this correct? No. There's a cheese line. Hi, Method Man. Hi, LL. Hi, like, i never seen nothing like this because you was inside cooking and everybody's favorite rapper, Chris Brown, whoever the fuck you name, is online waiting to get a Scott Storch beat. Is this correct? It's correct. This went on for some years. <laughs> <laughs> oh! Yo, Scott, listen. What records did you work on with Dr. Dre? And with Timberland. Worked on a lot of records with you guys. I need, I need uh, the people got to know. With Dre, our first record that we made together was Big Egos. We did Still Dre. I played on a lot of the uh, Chronic album. But Still as far Dre. as what doing the actual session. Still Dre? Yeah, bling, 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 bling. You know. Bling, bling, yeah, I wrote bling, that bling. shit. Yeah. Um, I did a lot of songs with them guys. I did a lot of songs for the for the aftermath what, what, G unit what, what, movement. I did a lot of. Things. I know you did all that. You did the uh, uh uh. You did man. You're a fucking motherfucker. I remember I used to go in your house. I want to burn it down. You had the biggest fifty cent plaque on there. Uh, <laughs> what's the joint you did with him and uh? It was the one with him and Game, huh? The, uh, I mean, I, I did a bunch of joints with like. No, you I mean, did. Like, on Yo, the G unit with them. With, with G unit and um. So you don't want to go into, you really don't want to go into, because I'm taking, you saying, Joe, let's leave that alone. That's, I know you too well. You're like, Joe, let's leave that alone. But I need people to know that you were responsible for some of these sounds that we heard on Hundreds Friday. of them. Hundreds of them. Hundreds of them. Uh, Timberland. And Timbo's my brother. Timbo the King's my brother. I love him too. You did Cry Me a River, right? Yeah, we you did Cry Me a River. We did... Hola, Bobito, with Jay. Hola, Bobito. Yeah. I never knew that shit, man. <laughs> what else you did, Scott? Oh, yeah. Man, we did a gang of stuff. Um, but, you know, we moved forward. Did you do that, we, that, that Eve? Uh, the Eve. And Gwen and, uh, Stefani? Yeah, you did that one, right? Yeah. The Eve, and then you did, uh, I think, it, was it Black Thought's record? I did a bunch <laughs> of stuff. <laughs> yeah, that was that was The Roots with Erica Badu. <laughs> that, that record. <laughs> They jacked that record. I did, I did that record with Jill Scott originally, and Quest Love came into my studio in Philly, 
and he said, yo, I need this for the Roots album. I was already, I, I departed from the Roots as a, 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 you know, immediate member, but I maintained my position doing like, you know, playing shows with them and, and you know, producing records. So that was one of a couple on that album, the Things Fall Apart album that we did. You owned 85%. I know your story more than you, right? You own 85. This is what people got to understand. Yo, these ain't numbers, nigga. Google. 85% of the Billboard's number one for a whole entire year. Is this true? This is true. 32 weeks. Different songs. Different Beyonce genres. Beyonce with Sean Paul. Gio Mario, and... Let Me Love You. Just a little bit, Candy yeah, Shop. All these songs yeah. came in like one I'll year. I'll take you at the can now. We made Candy Shop together. You had little Kim there. Did Your memory is crazy. Yeah, 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 Scott, don't get high, Scott. Yeah, Scott, listen. You had little Kim there, and Candy Shop. I made Candy Shop with you. I said, Scott, we need the Arabic shit. We need to dance this. And we had little Kim dancing for us. <laughs> no, no, a little bit more. Like we had her doing the a Arab dance, sitting over there. She was doing it. Then I took it, and uh, then I started telling myself, it sounds too much like lean back. I, the dumbest move I ever met, made in my life. And I tell you, Scott. And you, Scott, was like, yo, 50 Cent just rolled up right behind you. It's crazy because where I live now for the last 10 years, right across the street, from where we made Candy Shop. You called me about 25 times. This is before I had beef for 50 Cent. And you was like, are you sure I can give it to 50 Cent, yo? You even told me, yo, he's willing to give you any kind of money. He needs this beat. And I was like, nah, he got it. Don't worry about it. Biggest asshole mistake of my life, giving Candy Shop <laughs> to 50 Cent. Hey, I called you like five times. Like, no, you listen. kept going. Are you like, sure? Are you're you? sure. You're sure. The thing I and didn't know, the thing I wish I knew now was me and you really, we've been in the studio hundreds of times, but me and you only went in the studio four times to work, just to work. And every single time we went in, we came out with a number one record top 100. That's true. That was Get It Popping. That was Lean Back. That was Make It Rain, and you got a uh, Candy Shop out of this. Conceded as well, shit. too. Conceded. Well, Conceded, Remy Ma's Conceded was actually Missy Elliott's song. Had vocals and everything. I, don't, I wouldn't use the word strong arm on a friend, but I made you feel very uncomfortable to get that beat from Remy Ma. And you was like, yo, Missy's already on it, this and that. And I was like, yo, I need Conceded. And you gave it to me like a real brother. Come on, man. It's family. All right. Um, I am beyond at your lowest point in life. At your lowest point, I am beyond honored to be your friend and call you one of my brothers, one of my best friends on earth. If anybody shares a friendship with you or a brotherhood with you, they should be blessed. You are like an angel in this world. I have to be honest with you. Not because you make my, you may hit my biggest records for me, but because of who you are as a person. You, okay. you take the shirt off your back and give it to somebody you love. Mm -hmm. Am I right? I, I, you are right, man. A lot of people got that shit fucked up because they associate, oh, this guy was on drugs for a long time and this and that. He must be an asshole. You know what I'm saying? That's not the case. I wasn't even an asshole during those days. I was just fucking sick. You know what I'm saying? But not too many people came to my rescue when shit went bad. They was there when shit was popping, and now it's popping again. They they right back. You know You've always been there. there. I'm always with you, bro. Yeah. I, I I went to your house. I don't know if you know. I went to your house a month straight trying to hang out with you just to make sure I watch you not use drugs. And what I can tell the people is, and this is a similar... Thank God you're alive so we could do this because this is something else I'm going to allude to that I shouldn't, but fuck it, I'm going to do it. You're one of my best friends on earth. You, you, Thank you. you you're one of my best. That's a fact, bro. And uh, you never got high in front of me. No, nah, I couldn't do that. 
Why you never got high in front of me? I hear stories about as soon as I left Kilo flying in the air, butt naked bitches diving on mountains of coke. Why you never got high in front of me? Just respect, man. You know what I'm saying? And I knew you didn't want to see that. And I was hiding it and um, for a multitude of reasons. Good ones, bad ones, whatever. How much drugs you might have used? I mean, I was on some Tony Montana shit. But it was a lifestyle. It was strippers and fucking clubs and parties, A-lists Look, or whatever. Let me put out a neon sign. Sis, you saved my brother's life. I love you. His wife is the best woman yeah. on the planet Earth. But I got to go there with him. This, this, this is a life story that people don't understand. But I'm trying to get to a point for my, for, for my um, conscience. So with all the drugs you use in America, you never use drugs in front of Fat Joe. True or false? True. Now, I relate back to the big pun that has nothing to do with you. Big pun, his wife and them used to say big pun used to hit big pun's wife. If it's safe to say with all the drugs you used in your life and you never used in front of me, I might be telling the truth that I've never seen Big Pun ever raise his hand for his wife. We hide our demons from people that we respect and that we admire, you know what I'm saying? It's like, it's just the way it is. You might have been a trick. There's rumors out there of so much money you spent on bitches. That was voluntary. That, voluntary? That gave me a rush. Elaborate. Let, let them talk, yo. Just what being able mean? to do shit. Nobody ever, ever, none of the women I ever dealt with in my life ever was coming at me on some hoe shit. But people did know that if they was going to be hanging out at Scott Storch's house, they're going to be on a 100-foot yacht. There's going to be pounds of cocaine and I, I weed don't wanna, I don't wanna say that. and I'm this saying, and that. I'm and no, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to get to I'm, it. I'm, and I'm, that I'm, potentially I'm, he I'm, might take you to Bell Harbor the next day. Be, beyond if you're a good Harbor. girl. You know but what I'm saying? beyond Bell Harbor. Yeah. What's the biggest... Wifey, I love you. I worship you. I'm telling you the truth. I'm going to your father's dinner. She's OG. Day. She knows where All I'm right. at in my life now. You gave, what's the biggest shit you gave a bitch in your life? Because I got a counter story for you. But, like, I, go ahead. What's the biggest shit you gave a chick in your life? Psh, I did tons of shit, man. 20 what carat you gave diamonds. Paris Hilton, what you gave her? We, we got matching 20 characters one time. <laughs> uh, Maybachs is crazy shit. True or 62 false, is not the, the new shit. First shows. time, we all know the men, minute I met you, you smoke weed, right? But true or false, the first time you ever sniffed cocaine, you were in a bathroom with Paris Hilton and the biggest porn star. No, I was and not they, the first time I, um, I, I snorted coke, but I was introduced to cocaine from Hollywood and some of the key people in it. You don't want me to finish this story, huh? Yeah, now, hey, yeah, Scott. Not. Yeah, Scott, you don't want to finish. All right. Allegedly, did you ever have Paris Hilton with the biggest porn star on earth? And it was a menage situation. They put the cocaine on her ass and told you to sniff it off the ass and all that. I mean, I put the shit on that. You put it on there? Yeah, yeah, come on. Nigga, all this time I'm thinking they fucking baited you with the cocaine with that. No, 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 no. You know, there's a lot of rumors out there. I'm not accusing anybody of of, of, No, we're not accusing nobody. Just... You know, so, that lifestyle. The, the, so you poured the coke on the girl's ass? Yeah, that was a regular thing. Yo, Scott. We was doing some nasty shit, man. I walked in a stripper club one day in Houston. And one of the most beautiful black chicks I ever seen in my life ran up on me. And she had a ring so big. Her ring was, it was a diamond, might have been a million dollar diamond ring. And she told me, your brother, your brother gave me this ring, Scott Storch in Houston. I don't even know who that I wanted to beat the bitch up. <laughs> Yo, I don't even know who it was. I wanted to Bro, we was making so much fucking money, that shit didn't matter. There was no concept of what the, the value of that shit was. To drop a half a million dollars in an afternoon was like normal. Motherfuckers were making money. Hey, yo, 100 million. I'm gonna tell you something. That was just fun, man. It's so much, it was so beautiful being Scott Storch's friend at this time. Scott Storch had a hundred foot yacht. People say they got yachts. He had the yacht of the year. You know, the, the, let's be clear, this shit ain't have one thing of dust. And he told the captain, 
Whenever Fat Joe comes here, you take him to the yacht, no questions asked, don't wake me up, don't this and that. Scott, I abused that privilege. <laughs> so I was on family picnics That's not abuse, on your yacht. never from you. Never I was leaving you. the club Brothers. with 20 niggas going into the yacht, waking the captain up. This shit was amazing. Like, I could not believe this was happening. That's what it was there natural. for. That's why I wanted it. So the people that I love could enjoy it as, as well as me. And we enjoyed it. Growing up, there was a very famous actress. And you always had a crush on her. You might have been 10 years old. You might have been, you was a little kid. And you watch this TV show and these movies, and you, and you always had a crush on her. There's rumors that one day, I'm not going to say her name because I respect her a whole lot, but there's rumors that you got to fuck your crush many years later. This That's guy went later. back and fucked his childhood crush, movie actress it, of life. I'm gonna get killed when I get home, boy. No, 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 yo, Scott. I beg, I beg. I love sis. She knows I love you. No, no. I love you. I'm just. I just, I just. These people don't understand. We need the Scott Storch movie. I keep begging you for the Scott Storch movie. I want to produce the Scott Storch movie. They will never be. I look at you as um. What's this nigga's? Uh, Leonardo DiCaprio. Uh, the Great Gatsby. Your shit is the great Gatsby. Your shit, the great Gatsby meets blow, nigga. Like, ain't nobody seen no shit like this. Now, I'm going to tell you one thing. And sis, you know this is the past, right? This, this is why I started talking about these gifts that you, um, that you gave these girls. The definition of a trick, somebody who pays for pussy or spends money on chicks, and they're taking advantage of them. Not true in Scott Storch's case. Because they ain't a bitch I ever seen you with, you ain't fuck. I, I'm going to say that. I'm, like, like you, 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 you get busy. Like, like, if I seen you with a chick, there's no way I would say, yo, she's taking advantage of this nigga. This nigga hit it. No, listen. To get... The lifestyle that I wanted back in the day, which was not to be with one girl and try and, you know, I wanted to have five, eight girls at a time and, and, and some crazy. I was sick in the head. I was on cocaine. You know what I'm saying? So to have that, you got to be real generous to make girls all get along with each other and like, yo, you know, come on, do this for me. I really want eight girls tonight. You know what I'm you saying? You fuck everybody. they all got feelings for you. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's not like they're there for, so I'm the asshole. They weren't the assholes. You fucked Everybody. and I should have um, been in the studio making music all, all that time. You still was making music at that time. Yeah. I watch you, and um, I know you probably more than you know yourself. And I watch you, and you make these moves. Sometimes, you, you, Joe, I'm not using drugs. I'm coming back. I'm coming back. And, you know, I have a brother that suffers from drugs. So I know when you're lying to me and you're not, right? But you've been so clean. This woman helped you change your life. Three years. Of course, three years sober. Yeah, not a single line. It's for life, too. And I always told everybody, and my wife is a big fan of yours. She's, She's a greatest. big advocate for you. My whole family, we worship you. And she told me, she hates when I say this, but she's a hater, right? But she always told me in your worst day, that man is making a comeback. She, she tells me this all the time. They're not going to be able to stop Scott Storch. That man is making a comeback 1 million percent. You making a comeback, bro. I see you working with Chris Brown. I see you working with everybody. Everybody. Tell me some of the people you're working with right now. Um, right now, um, I'm actually... Working with Post Malone, you know, working with Fat Joe and, and Bone Thug, right. you know, Chris Brown, I mean, Remy Ma, uh, you know, a lot of people, man. Too many to mention. NBA, NBA uh, right, young you know, star, Black Youngster, uh, uh, Russ, you know, I mean, it, the list goes on and on. A Boogie, The Hoodie, Don Q, Game, The Game, you know, I'm busy. You really busy. Yeah, I'm busy again. And you're gonna be even busier. 
-hmm. you know. And I'm clear minded, and the music is is right. And a lot of producers assume that I'm doing what I was doing in 2006 when I ran shit. Now I'm doing what I'm doing in 2018 and about to run shit again. The biggest fear for a lot of people that make beats is for somebody that's a producer to come in. A real producer. But that knows how to do everything that they're doing now and flip it and add the old shit to it and that's the theory. That's like the I've best of both worlds. I've been telling you this shit for years though. I don't know if but you, it's I wish down. I would have tape recorded my, myself and I kept telling you that what these people I was do, sick at the time. I couldn't do anything. My son raps and he does that kind of rap though. Down, did it, did it, right? And I tell him all the time, I say, your rhyme is just so easier to do this shit. And I was telling you the same thing produce wise, because none of these guys are better than you. None of these guys are more talented than you. And it's like a joke. It's a lot of the same shit, but there's shining moments in the genre. And there's gonna be, but there's a whole lot of garbage along with the, the great shit. And people are accepting the garbage. That's the scary part. When they accept garbage and they're like, oh, this is the shit. And, you know, that's some crazy shit, man. Just means, you know, people aren't. Dr. Dre was a very, very, he might have been a better friend to you than even Fat Joe is. I mean, both great friends. Dre is, is uh, you know, he opened up the door for me. To, he saw the talent. He believed in me. And he stuck with me, you know. And I used to show up to work sometimes, <laughs> work with him go to the bathroom because my nose is bleeding in the sink and, or I'm too fucked up and I've been up for two days and I'm trying to pretend like I wasn't and I'm like falling asleep in front of the keyboard and he dealt with me. And, he uh, came down to Miami and he tried to talk you into rehabilitation. This is when everything was going bad, right? I mean, he didn't even go that far. He was just, he just rode with me, man. Like he believed in me. He came down even knowing shit was a little suspect. And he flew out a whole crew of people to work with me at my house in Miami. We got absolutely nothing done. It wasn't his fault. <laughs> I know he tried to help you. Uh, now, it's rumors you're getting back in with, 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 with Dre yeah, on and, detox. Yeah, me and Dre are cool again. And uh, there's some sessions going to be going down in the very, very near future at a very new studio that he just put together. So life is good. I'm happy about that. I go to sleep better at night knowing that that relationship is healthy again. Because nah, that shit bothered me. That boy, Dr. Dre, always got your back, man. He always, of course. Uh, he always supported you from day one. Of course. And I know he can't wait. Like, I can't wait for you to make the biggest comeback ever lived in life. That's me and Steve LaBelle's goal right now is to not you got be the right working man on the big job. albums, but we're going to have the biggest songs on those albums this year. Work, work and never jerk. You got the best guy out, you know. You, you can't find a more clean-cut motherfucker. Like, I mean, the Pope might have hired this nigga, uh, Steve LaBelle, for you. Like, but boy, Steve LaBelle is the most clean nigga in the world to work with you. Bro, uh, God put two incredible people in my life in the past few years. That's my girl Florence and Steve LaBelle. I've and never we seen. We got an amazing team. There's you know a lot saying? of amazing women out there, but I never seen a woman fight for her man and help you turn your life around like this woman. She's amazing. She's always with you. She's always by your side. She's so supportive. Um, you know, we gotta big her up because she's, you know, she's something else, man. <laughs> and um. Nah, she crazy. She'll whop him on the head. He fuck around, but you know, yeah. she but she's the shit, man. She's the shit, and every time, cause me and you, we so affiliated that uh, everywhere I go, believe it or not, at least once a day, somebody asks me about Scott Storch, whether it's in the airport, whether it's in an interview, whether it's you know, me and you, we stuck, we stuck together at the hit, and I, I always begin by saying, yo, he found the best woman in the world. She holds him down. She, uh, you know, changed his life. She supports him one million percent. Mm -hmm. um, the real story is she seen me in a, a, a really bad predicament living in South Florida, you know, squeaking by with some people. I'm in a deal with them and they're really not concerned with my career, but they, they wanted me, they, they needed me on their team for their own selfish reasons to work with their cousins and nephews and whatever. 
and I wasn't getting nowhere except slow, slow suicide. Mm -hmm. And she pulled me out of that shit, moved me to California, and painted me into a corner, you know, and said, you have to stop doing drugs. And I did it. And now we're working. If there was a, if there was a mountain of cocaine right here, would you look at it? Ugh, it would nauseate me. It would nauseate me. I don't want no parts of that shit anymore. I don't even have ever any urges or thoughts. I've been around it. I, and you know what the craziest shit in the world is? This generation, is this whole industry is flooded with it now. When now I was doing it, I was here. the outcast because if you was that doing was it, it some, was like you. It was, that was some white people shit. shit. That, yeah, white know. people shit. Yeah. Now they now it's like, yo, I got this. Yeah. Right. And everybody thinks that it would be the coolest thing in the world to do some cocaine with Scott Storch. It's like doing something with Pablo Escobar or some shit. And I have to be like, dog, Scott Storch that's not it. Man. Smoke some weed. What beat you making when you're geeked up on coke? None. What verse you writing? How you doing that shit? Now it's the lean, the coke, this and that. I'm cool. It's a circus out there now. You know, you have a powerful story because it's so hard to beat uh, addiction to drugs. You know, my brother, I, I beat up every drug dealer in the block. I took him to 10 rehabs. As soon as I walk him in, I run around the back. I know he's going to sneak out. I sneak out with him. I cry with him. I, um... You know, when he went to jail, I did everything in the universe trying to stop this man from using drugs. And my brother's the guy I look up to. And uh, he, he couldn't do, he couldn't stop. So I know how powerful this thing is, man. How uh, controlling this drugs is, mm -hmm. you know. And so you, you, you to be commended and you helping thousands and millions of people just being here on the Coca Vision podcast you know, telling your story. Now, you know, this is the Chapo Tunnel, but, you know, some positive things could come out of the Chapo Tunnel. Hell yeah. We do this thing. I love the Dave Chappelle show, and I do this thing I ask all my guests. When keeping it real goes wrong, when have you felt like you try to keep it real and it went wrong? I need a specific story. You know what? There's been a lot of times where that, you know, I've, um, I've, you know, kept it real. I mean, I, I keep it real every day. So, you know, I, I don't feel like keeping it real is ever wrong for me. You know what I'm saying? No matter what the consequences are, what, what the situation is, I always live by a code and I stick by it. You know what I'm saying? So I don't really have any story where anything per se went, went south from doing the right thing. Donald Trump. What are your thoughts? That's a crazy dude right there. He's the president of the United States. That's even more terrifying. It's a crazy dude. I got one Donald Trump story. That's all I got. All right, let me hear. I used to date a girl. At one point, she was Miss Universe. And she was the first, like, I guess, Middle Eastern Miss Universe or something. And she was sponsored by Donald Trump. And hanging out with her and getting calls in the middle of the night. And she'd be like, shh, it's Donald. I'd be like, it's Donald. And she'd be talking to him on the phone. And I'm like, wow, I was chilling with this, y'all you know saying, with this guy's whatever, I guess, his hobby Side or whatever. Joint. And, and, um, and now he's the president of the United States. That's some crazy shit. That's bugged out, right? It's bugged out. I mean, we've seen some pretty uh, crazy shit. In our lifetime, but uh, Donald Trump being president of the United States is as crazy as it fucking gets. You know, in all your records, I'm going to end it with this one. In all your records that you've ever produced, which one is your favorite and why? Um, there's a few. All right, I would have to say I got two. Lean Back and Me, Myself, and I with Beyonce. Just because it was so musical. One was like a real hardcore, like just incredible hot beat. And then the other one was just 
soulful and her voice was so dope and it was like you could really feel what she was saying. Nice. I love the video. I love the whole vibe. You know, lean back, I'm going to tell you something. Uh, it's, it, it was probably the only beat. You know, I'm very confident. You know, when I started, I started Apollo Theater, Amateur Night at the Apollo, and I came in first place four weeks in a row. So I've always been confident. I've never been, like, scared. But Lean Back was such an ill beat that I was scared to write to it for, like, a whole month. I would listen to this beat in my car with the sound system every day in the truck and didn't know what to do. It was just, I knew it was a hit. When you left the studio with the beat, I was like, I wonder if you're going to do something with that. It wasn't like, I couldn't read you that day. I was like, I, maybe we got something. I got the call a few months later, like, yo, we got one. We're going to Summer Jam with this. And da, 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 da. and it was, it was a movie to the point where we had fucking Bruce Willis leaning back at the award show when we played it live. I remember the one time, the first time I played it in Summer Jam. Shout out to Little John. He he let me come out there and rock. And it took it took a down south dude to bring me out to Summer Jam. And when me and Remy came out and we did Lean Back, 60, 70,000 people at the same time was like this. <laughs> That's a wave. I couldn't believe it because it's the first time we ever performed it somewhere big like that. And um, I remember turning around and there was a face looking like stuck. The face was like this. And it was Kanye West. He was standing on the side of the stage because he was performing there too and he was just stuck like, the fuck, this shit is massive. Uh, Lean back changed my life, my life, my lifestyle, my everything. The reason it's so big for me is uh, I was signed to Atlantic Records and uh, I had one album go 1.9 million. And then I put out another album that went just under gold. I think it went like 480,000 or something. And Atlantic was starting to play me like I got AIDS or leprosy. They were starting to not pick up my calls. They were acting like this and this and that. And they were shitting on me, my nigga. And uh, that was my label. And um, I remember I threatened the security because you got to understand these record labels, they got to know they be doing fucked up shit if they got security and bulletproof windows when you go <laughs> to, to every radio. Every record label has bulletproof windows and armed security when you like, you already know they robbing niggas, my nigga, right? So it's like a check cashing place, right? So I walk up in there, I threaten the security nigga. I'm like, yo, my nigga, we gonna put it on you. Open the door. He opens the door. So I go in uh, Craig Cowman's office, and I sit down in Craig Cowman's office. And I was like, yo, Craig, what's up? He was like, yo, what's up? I said, I'm leaving you 30 messages a day of this and that. What's going on with the next album with this? So he was like, yo, you know, we're trying to figure this out, this and that. I said, guess what? My brother Steve Rifkin, he over there at Loud, he wants me to do a little compilation album, a Terror Squad album. You know, like, sure, Joe, get out of here. Like, you know, like, I'm washed up. They was like, yeah, go ahead, go over there. Yeah, yeah. We went over there, we put out that motherfucking lean back, 47 weeks, number one. And um, it was one of the most, that and all the way up, was one of the most gratifying moments of my life. Cause well, you here always I was. put one out. You always, whenever you hit, it just goes. Yeah, that all the way up too. You know, I got locked up. They tried to take all my money. Um, they left me really, really fucked up. And, um, it was important to me, you know what I mean? I'm, I see myself in the studio. You probably feel similar. And, you know, all the young kids come in the studio, and they're like, what up, OG? And they working on their shit. And I'm like, yo, what's up, y'all? And I know some of them might have been looking at me on the couch like, this nigga's wash, this old nigga wash. And nothing can stop me. I'm all the way up. Niggas is like, oh, my God. Like, this thing. If it's one thing I know. Again. When I wake up every day and I turn my TV on and whatever, or the radio, whatever, I'm going to hear that song. Every day when I wake up, I know I'm going to hear that song somewhere. That's fucking... Still, and like, that's some crazy shit. 
Mountain Dew, like fucking. That's lean it's a back blessing, does, man. He lean deserves back the does the same thing, man. Lean back. Uh, it's like every time you hear this brand new, like it ain't like some dated shit. You know, it's a classic record that the minute you hear it, it's it's it's, it's, it's out of here. Make it rain. When I came to you and I said, "Yo, Scott." I'm going to do a down south song. You fought me. You was like, yo, you fat Joe. You digging in the crates. You New York. I was like, yo, Scott, we got to do it. Because I went around. I went on a tour around the whole country. And I was in the hottest club of, of every town. And all they were playing was like That's trap music. Good. And um, I remember one day I was in a club in Memphis. And um, the DJ was like, I'm going to take it to the old school. And he threw on a Jay-Z record that was like number one now. It was like, the rock building's in the building tonight. Oh, what a feeling I'm feeling. It wasn't even like a throwback, reasonable doubt. He threw a Jay-Z record of right then, and he called it like a throwback because it was boom back. It was boom back. And that's when I ran to the studio, and I was like, yo, Scott, we got to do. I was like, yo, Scott, we got to do a motherfucking trap. And sure enough, we went in there, and... That that went number one too, you know. I mean, I know me and you, we got more hits to do. I know you got more hits to do. Um, it's guaranteed the people need it, they want it. Um, we gonna lock in the studio soon. I know you in with Remy tomorrow. You know, she ain't stupid. She knows what's going on. Mm-hmm. And um, that's gonna be a movie. We 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 um we going in me and Zaytoven in the daytime. We gonna get some stuff knocked out for that. That's a movie. Knock one out the park. Yeah. This is Coca Vision, your host, Joe Crack the Dawn, exclusively on title. Get three months subscription free. The one and only legendary, my favorite producer of all time, my brother, my comrade, Scott Storch.